We decided to start by riding the train around. There's three stops and then we'll get off at the third stop and start on the backside of Greenfield Village, working our way forward. So we're walking now up to where we get on the train. Standing at the train station waiting for the train to come pick us up. This is the view out at the main front train station area. We just exited the train at the porches uh, area of Greenfield Village. This is called the Susquehanna Station. Daggett Farmhouse, like other farm families living in hard scrabble northeastern Connecticut during the 1760s. Sam da Samuel Daggett and his family relied largely on their own skills and hard work. He worked the family farm, built houses, and made furniture. His wife Anna spun yarn, made clothing, fed the animals, and taught their children how to read and write. Like other families in this area of Connecticut, the Daggett's used, sold, or traded items they made for those they needed. Built in 1754 in Andover, Connecticut. Samuel Daggett held many jobs, like many other people in the community. Sometimes he even pulled teeth. <laughs> Turnips, which they're boiled, so they boil the turnips 
This is the house of Noah Webster. So, in this house, Noah Webster, finally, after 25 years of writing this thing, he will complete and publish the first American dictionary from this home. It is a 70,000 word dictionary. This is Thomas Edison's homestead. It was built in 1815 in Vienna, Ontario, Canada. Additions were made in 1860. This is the Sarah Jordan Boarding House, one of the first homes ever to be wired with electric light, built in 1870 in New Jersey. Sarah Jordan's Boarding House that you're in, and this is where the single man who worked for Thomas Edison lived in Menlo Park, New Jersey. Now it's historically important because it's the very first house to be wired for electricity. So if you look up at the ceiling, you see the wiring and the bare light bulb. Oh, yeah. Edison wanted to promote his latest invention, so he had his men wire this house and three others. And then on New Year's Eve, 1879, they had a big exhibition, and they lit up the little town of Menlo Park. And this is the only one that's left. This here is the Thomas Edison Menlo Park Complex.
Any questions about anything? Oh, I got to show you something. Right here. Uh, this is uh, a remake of the original, which is sitting over there. See there underneath this table? See that, that uh, crank sitting out? That's broken. So Ford had this one made, just like the original. If a gentleman uh, was working at his workstation and, you know, gets a little bit drowsy, he puts his head down. Uh, Edison didn't mind if it's uh, 10, 15, 20 minutes maybe. But, you know, a little bit more than that, you're wasting our time. So he had this, this thing made, which is this one now. And it's called a corpse. What's a corpse, kids? A dead body. Reviver. <laughs> it is so loud, it would wake up a dead body or a corpse. <coughs> so let's say Bill is sitting here, you know, he's been working hard, and uh, I'm just going to put my head down for just a minute here. And maybe it's half an hour, 45 minutes, and he's not getting any work done. Ford would get this thing and come up in the back of him. Uh, this is very loud. Okay, if you have any uh, problem with loud noises, I'm going to turn the crank here. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Corpse, did you see it? Did you get it on your thing there? Do it again. Ready? That's pedals. <laughs> when Edison came up here to see this, it was 80, let's see, in 1929, 80. 80 years old, he died two years later. He put his elbow on that post, right there, right where that gentleman has his hand. His elbow there, and he's just taking everything in. And, you know, he's, just, he's amazed that Mr. Ford was able to get so close. Because he had a lot of pictures to go by, and living men who had worked for us back in the old building. So Ford asked him, how did we do it, Tom? How close is it to the way you remember it? And Adam said, Henry, you've got it. 99 and 9 tenths percent correct. Whoa, boy, I would have been proud. Oh, thank you, Tom. What did Mr. Ford say? What's wrong? What's the matter with him? He said, we never kept the floors this clean. <laughs> we are eating lunch at the Eagle Tavern. It is decorated in 1800. And they serve meals from recipes from the 1800s. This is a statue of Thomas Alva Edison. He was born in 1847, died in 1931, who was a good friend with Henry Ford. Yeah, let me get a This is the home of the Orville and Wilbur Wright that grew up in. It was built in 1871 in Dayton, Ohio. And this is Orville and Wilbur Wright's 
cycle shop. built around 1860 in Dayton, Ohio, where they performed research and experimentation, design and construction on the first successful airplane. This is the right. Honey, you wanted to be over there for a picture of this building. And this is Orville and Wilbur Wright's cycle shop. built around 1860 in Dayton, Ohio, where they performed research and experimentation, design and construction of the first successful airplane. Okay. Anyway, somehow I have this soft timer. Every time I push that button, it's like... <laughs> GoPro stop in the Orville Wilbur Wright works uh, bicycle, bicycle shop with the machinery for building the airplane. This is the farmhouse that Henry Ford grew up in as a young boy. Built in 1861 in Springwells Township, Michigan. Well, welcome to the Ford home. Hello. This is the original home Henry Ford was born and raised in. Built in 1861, he was born in the home in 1863. So he lived here with his grandma and grandpa, his mom and dad, and then there were six kids. He was the oldest of the six. Wow. The original site of the home was just a little over three miles from here. And they, um, they were farmers. They lived eight miles out of Detroit so they could make good money mm -hmm. right where they, um, where, where they lived, eight miles from a major city. So that's where you would find your most prosperous farmers. They were considered um, middle class, upper middle class, um, not anything, you know, very um, fancy, but because they were farmers. Right. So yeah. in, in that time period, a farmer <clears throat> could never be upper class because you get your hands dirty. Uh -huh. But that farmer could have more money than the doctor. Dirt, on, <laughs> dirt under the nails. <laughs> yes, exactly. They worked hard. <laughs> well, we have sure. three bedrooms up, three down. The original kitchen <coughs> was turned into the everyday parlor. Oh, so this was the original kitchen? It area. was. It was. They yeah. added on to the home about 10 years after it was built when Mrs. Ford was expecting the fifth child. Uh, 